My name is Andres, Baby Seal Test Kitchen. We are making thin crust pizza. This is one of my favorite styles because we love pizza, but it's a little less dough and it's crispier. It's just amazing. So <clears throat> we're going to share, we're going to go through both um, sides. We actually make the dough for you. Um, and if you've seen this before, ask some questions. And but then we're going to get into um, actually making the thin crust. And what makes this really unique and awesome, it's, it's crispy, like a cracker thin. And you have essentially a smaller dough ball. Um, we're using 100 and like 50 grams of dough versus 250 grams of dough. Thin crust pizza just is amazing on a baking steel in your oven. If you don't have a baking steel, pizza stone's okay, but you're really not going to get the benefit of that steel crisping it up in a home environment, which is just awesome. Um, let's talk dough first. W at least a 24-hour dough. We like two, three-day dough. If you've been following us enough, um, that's critical. For the flour, we're using a, uh, a bread flour. This is, a, this is essentially our 72-hour dough um, with a different size. So let's go through the steps. Measure everything with a scale, okay? Because the scale dials in the water to flour ratio beautifully and perfectly. And this is a science experiment, so we need to dial that in really well. Uh, we'll take 500 grams of flour, 16 grams of sea salt, and I'm gonna dump it into my flour and just whisk it around. I treat each ingredient separately so they don't like kind of come in contact with each other. Once I whisk this, I'm gonna take one gram of active dry yeast. This is flesh bins. It's a micro amount. Um, and I urge you to get yourself another scale. This is called a micro scale. It's a lot smaller. It can measure to the one one hundredth of a gram, which is minuscule. So again, these are um, available. This is a brand called Salter. I think we found it at Sur La Table. Whisk it in with the salt, okay, and the flour. And now what I'm going to do, super easy, I'm going to take my room temperature water, and my room temperature here, I mean about 72 degrees, and I literally just pour it in. And now what I'll do is I'll take my GIR spatula. This is nice because it's rubber, and there's no seams, so it just kind of doesn't get... Uh, easy to clean. And this water hydration to flour is about 70%. So it's 350 grams of water to flour, which makes this dough really sticky. <clears throat> um, if you're new and you don't want to put that much, you know, if you want to make it a little less sticky, easier to maneuver and feel, use a little less water. And that just makes it a little bit easier um, to play around with. Once I've got that somewhat um, combined, I'm going to remove it from the bowl. I'm going to grab my very cool, everything's cool, um, bench scraper. And now I'm going to knead this dough lightly for the next, you know, if I'm doing this for the first time, maybe two or three minutes. And all I got to do is kind of just press down on my flour and my water together to form one big mass of dough. And it's sticky, that's okay. If you don't like the stickiness, you can get your hands really wet and that seems to help with that, or a little bit of oil sometimes in between works. But what I'm doing, I'm just kind of pressing down, in case I have any dry clumps, um, this will kind of minimize those dry clumps of flour because this is the only work we're gonna do with this dough. It's really simple. If you haven't made it before, I urge you to get it. Try this recipe out. It's really simple. See how sticky that is now? I feel as though I've been kneading that enough, <clears throat> lightly enough. There's no dry clumps. And I'm going to take this, literally just put it right back into my bowl, like this. And now I'm going to let this, I'm going to cover this first. These Cambro, this is a company called Cambro that makes these. 
I'm going to cover it. You can hear that snap. It's airtight. I'm going to leave this at room temperature for the next 12 hours, okay? It's 11 o'clock now, so before, well, before bed, it might be like 9 o'clock for me. I'm going to take this container and put it into the refrigerator for two or three days, depending when I'm making actually the pizza. Um, at that point, I'm going to remove it and make some dough balls. Um, in this case, small dough balls, 150 grams, and then I'm going to make pizza, okay? And now, um, which brings us to phase two. Let's fast track to um, Friday, okay? Let's say <clears throat> I'm going to make pizza Friday, so Friday morning, uh, around noon, I'm going to take that dough out of the fridge, make my balls, let those balls rest, and we'll show you how to make the balls. Um, we'll link to a, a dough ball video, how to make these super simple. Um, let's fast track to Friday at, let's say it's, the guests are coming at 7, it's 5 o'clock. Take these out or leave them out at room temperature so the dough can start to rise and relax, etc. Et at that point, about an hour before making pizza, I'm going to fire my oven up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, if you have convection, use the convection. Remember, the, the convection is just a fan that blows around in the back of um, your oven to even out that heat. So we want 500 degrees for a minimum of one hour. That heat is all now absorbed into the steel. It's super hot like a battery. It's going to make everything that touches it better, okay? Whew, there's a, long, a lot of stuff there. All right, now let's get into the thin crust. Our guests are arriving in a few minutes. I'm going to have one kind of sitting out ready for them as they uh, arrive. And again, our portion size is 150 grams. This is smaller. Typically, we're using 250 grams. It's still going to make about a 12 or 13 inch pizza. Only thing different, instead of stretching it by hand, we're going to use a rolling pin. And we're going to squish the living daylights out of the dough and remove those air bubbles, kind of press them out of there um, to make it cracker thin, like an eighth of an inch thick. Okay, so in order to do that, um, I'm going to start the dough. So I, I lightly flour up in front of me. I put a little olive oil in these containers just to help this dough come out. And I press it right down into the flour. I didn't press, but I placed it. Um, and now I'm going to do is just pick up both sides. Okay? And if you've used this, if you've touched this 72-hour dough, it's super soft and supple and bubbly. It's just gorgeous, really. It feels like a cloud. I've never touched a cloud, but if I did, it would feel like this. Um, and I'm just lightly pressing, okay? And it's starting to expand in size. And you see these bubbles? Can you see the bubble, Chef? Yeah, I see that bubble there? I'm going to squish it out. And typically, I don't do that. I like my bubbles. But for the thin crust, <clears throat> a term that might come up with thin crust pizza is called docking. Um, and actually, I'm going to show you a docker in a minute. I, mean, I think we have one somewhere, don't we? Have one somewhere? But I'm going to stretch this mostly by hand. So I'm kind of, you can see how it's starting to expand. And when it gets to be, maybe this is about eight or nine inches, I'm going to grab my rolling pin, flour it up. Um, now, I'm gonna, carefully, I'm going to just kind of roll both sides. Kind of keep it even so it keeps, stays in a circle, if you care about a circle. And I'm, you can see, I'm making sure it's not going to get stuck, so I'll pick it up. Make sure it's not sticking to my table. It's not. Yes, see how thin this is? Yes, see how thin that is getting, right? That's what we want. We want it thin. This is 140 grams again. And I can probably make this about 10 inches by rolling it, rolling it. I think we're there, Chef. What do you think? You guys see how flat that is? It's pretty awesome. Okay, before I do anything else, grab your peel. I'm going to lube it up. So I use a little bit of flour and a little bit of semolina flour. Boom. Lightly dust it. All right. So now I'm going to show you guys a new cooking technique uh, that I'm going to use for this thin crust. As I'm making my pizza, I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to turn the broiler on. 
So I've got the broiler on the high setting. So in other words, that broiler is going to kick in in a few minutes and get my baking steel even hotter than the 500 degrees. We'll get back to that in a second. I'll, I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Throw my, um, my dough on my peel and give it a light shake. Make sure it's going to shake and slide like a hockey puck. It's almost like a square. Right? I can stretch it a little bit more, but can you see how thin that is? I mean, that's really thin. Can you see the thinness? Really very little air bubbles. Um, it's like almost paper thin. Probably a little bit. I could probably go a little thinner, but pretty cool. Let's talk sauce. My thin crust. Uh, this is crushed tomatoes. Show you the tomatoes I'm using. Crush the Napoli's. Bianco de Napoli is my favorite. A uh, little bit of sea salt. Oh, I'm going to do cheese first. I'll do both. Huh? I, did, I messed up. I'm going to do cheese first. But anyway, I'm going to do a light, I'm going to do a couple of coats here. A really light um, sauce here on the bottom. And again, I can bring it close to the edge, but not over the edge. Just like life. Really light coat, right? Now what I'm going to do is, I've got some cheese that uh, went to the deli. Chef went to the deli at Whole Foods. We got some provolone, and we asked him to slice it. And we're going to use sliced cheeses right on our pizza here. You can see how I'm doing that, boom. You guys like cheese? Who doesn't, right? This low-fat, Chef? Thanks, Chef. And once I get enough cheese on, maybe, maybe I can add... What do you think? More sauce? A little bit more. A little bit more sauce. It's a little bit, right? Not a lot, but that's going to help protect the cheese from browning maybe, right? Again, light coat, thin, gorgeous. Looks like a lasagna or a roll, huh? Yes. Looks amazing. Um, you see I've got cheese in my sauce on here, thin crust pizza, and now I'm going to give it a little shake. It's still sliding in on the peel, which means I can get it into the oven. Again, you haven't made pizza often, it's got to slide here before I go to the hot baking steel. And now I'm going to launch it, the back of this peel goes to the back of the steel, and I just kind of shake it off. Alright, so, um, I have a rag, here we go. So let's do this. My broiler is now off, that's okay, boom. Back of the peel, the back of the steel, slide it off, boom, like that. Close my oven up. I'm going to switch my oven back to convection bake. So I'm turning the broiler off. In other words, that pizza is not going to have any time really underneath the broiler itself. I turned it off, but what I did do is I cranked up the temperature of that steel to get it hotter than 500 degrees just for a few minutes as that broiler was kicking in. So when I launched a thin crust, it's going to make it really maybe extra crispy on the bottom, which to me, thin crust, crispy, just awesome, like a thin cracker crust. Let's open it up, see what we got. Oh yeah, look at this. That looked pretty. So underneath, it's almost, it's getting there, right? It's kind of getting close. I'm going to brush off a little bit here. Clean up my steel. Um, I've got another steel in the bottom. I could, I could move this down, but one steel is perfect. I'm going to close this up. That's been about three minutes. So I'm going to put the timer on for maybe another two minutes. In fact, I'm going to check this now. It's been about two more minutes. Let's take it out. Ooh, yeah, baby. That look good. Let's remove. Now we're getting some crispiness. It looks good. Take it out. I could probably go another minute, but I'm not going to. Boom. Yeah, I see this cracker thin pizza, right? Cooked underneath it beautifully. It's pretty it's hot. Um, Pretty, pretty, pretty strong, right? What do you think? Now, it's gorgeous. You can see this. Boom. Right? Get some nice colors on the edge. I could go a little bit more if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Um, let's top it off. What do you think? Basil, chef? Yes, sir. Chiffonade? No. No? no more. Huh? Whole? Tear it. We're going to tear it. How's that? All right. Just going to take some basil, throw it down, smaller pieces. You can do big pieces, small pieces, maybe a little bit of olive oil, Chef? What do you think? As big as your head. It's almost, almost as big as my head. 
Get a little bit more. Oh man, this looks incredible, doesn't it? Man, it doesn't get, huh? Parm would have been good too. Oh, do you have any parm in there? Let's see. Basil, what they I do? Olive oil. Just a little bit, a little bit of, a little bit of olive oil. And then we're going to take a little parm and just kind of top it. Oh man, this looks good, huh? Jeez. I don't think you can get a better pizza anywhere, chef. What do you think? With the, this is a, literally, a, like a, this is a four-day dough. Um, oh my goodness. Unbelievable. This gorgeous. Smells amazing. Um, there's a lot of thin crust pizza, guys. See that? Beautiful. Boom. Oh, it's cracking. What do you think? Good? All right. 